You know the drill, as soon as we start. Hola, senoras, senores, y perros. <laughs> so today we are going to do another one of our collaboration videos. And as you know, as soon as we roll the camera, this one gets in the middle of everything. So today we are doing another collaboration. The uh, topic for this collaboration is favorite mods that you've done to your rig. Can we preface it by saying we just got the rig so we haven't done too many yeah. mods? That's exactly where I, where I was gonna go. So we just got our rig um, a few months ago and so we really haven't done any mods other than the ones that the dealer did. Uh, so this is gonna be a somewhat short video. But before, before we talk about our mods, it is a collaboration which means that there are other collaborators within the group that are gonna talk about their mods. I'm sure some of them have more than three. And those collaborators are starting right there, Tony Tao. Who is it? Camping with the Coffers, Mike and Shelly K. Try that again, because it sounded like coffers. Camping with the Confers. <laughs> you can't say it this morning, can you? Camping with the Confers, Mike and Shelly K. And we also have Just Rambling Around, which is Ron and Jody. And RV Wagon Tails, Dave and Tina and the doggies. The wiener dogs. And then we have a guest. We usually have a guest. This month's guest is Cruising with the Colons with Brian and Michelle. So once you are done watching our mod or our video on our mods, go watch theirs and learn more about mods. What's a mod? Uh, a mod is, mod is short for modification. Or, if you're a Gen Xer like me, they're these kooky kids that used to ride around on scooters with a bunch of mirrors all over the scooters. Ciao. I don't know why they had a southern accent. I have no idea. <laughs> Let's talk about the three mods that we did. The first mod that we did was we went from a fifth wheel to a Gen Y gooseneck hitch. Why and, would we do that? Well, to talk about that, we're going to go right outside. Welcome to the outside. So let's talk a little bit about the Gen Y hitch. If you see behind me, that's our truck. And the Gen Y hitch is really the only reason that we were able to go to a fifth wheel. Because if you look at the back of the truck, you'll see that it is completely full of video gear. That's the stuff that we use when we go out on site to shoot for clients. So we had to be able to get that truck bed back so that we could haul gear around when we had jobs. The Gen Y hitch allows us to do that and it allows us to do it quickly and I'm going to show you how but first let me get all this gear out of the back of this truck. Now that we have the truck bed empty, let's talk a little bit about the components for the Gen Y gooseneck hitch. First, the hitch itself is attached to the front of your fifth wheel. It attaches in the same bolts that your normal kingpin would attach to, uh, but instead of a kingpin, it's just got a receiver for uh, a gooseneck hitch. And what does that look like? Well, I'm gonna show you. So we went with the BMW gooseneck hitch or hitch ball that looks like this. It basically will slide down into the hole in the truck and then you pull this tab here, fold that over and that's what locks it into place. Um, in addition to this, in addition to the ball, if you are running a, a gooseneck hitch, you do have to have safety chains. And so these are the D-rings uh, that the safety chains hook into. Now, we have two of them, one for each side. Now, when we bought our truck, I specifically made sure that the truck had a gooseneck prep, also called a puck system, on the truck. So it makes it super, super easy to install all of this stuff. Here, I'll show you. So as you'll see in the back of the truck, we have five holes that connect down to the frame of the truck. We're only gonna use three of them uh, for the gooseneck hitch. One for the goose ball and two, the two towards the back of the truck for the D-rings that the chains are gonna hook into. So let's go install it. So the first thing that we have to do is remove the cover from the holes. This is the center hole for the goose ball. We'll drop that goose ball in. 
and then just flip the handle over and that locks it in. Now for the two D rings, all we do is again, pull the plugs out of the holes. Take the D-ring, lift up the latch, spin the base so it'll drop into the hole, and then spin the whole D-ring around to where the top will latch back down on it. And just like that, we're ready to haul. Uh, we have the whole truck bed back. All we gotta do is drop the gooseneck hitch onto the ball, hook up the electrical, hook up the chains, and off we go. The next modification that we had done was a modification that Tony Tao requested, and that was washer and dryer. Why a washer and dryer? Because we traveled for five months last year and every time we showed up to a different campground or different spot, the washer and dryer situation was tenuous. <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> it also needs to be very expensive. I mean, the price of washing and drying ranged anywhere from $2 to $5 a load. And because we live in a trailer, we don't have as much clothes as you would have at your house. So I just constantly have to do laundry. So now I have a washer and dryer and I do a load of laundry every day and I never feel stressed out by laundry anymore. No longer wasting brain cycles on laundry rooms. I like that. I kind of like the spin cycle too. Yeah, you can probably see like the washer's going right now. And so when it goes on spin cycle, the trailer moves just a little bit. There's like a little, there's a reflection from our light up here. You can probably see it moving around because the trailer's moving a little. a little bit. I kind of like it. It's kind of like the massage button on the on Thomas Paine chairs, except instead of massaging the chairs, it does the whole RV. And then the last, the last mod that we had our our dealer do for us was to put in two 100 amp lithium batteries. So why did we go to lithium? In our previous trailer, we had one lead acid battery and with just one lead acid battery, we were not making it through the night without our batteries getting below 50%. For those of you that don't know batteries, if you have lead acid, if you get below a 50% charge, you'll start doing damage to the battery. With lithium, you can take them way below uh, 50% with no damage. The other reason we wanted 100, 100 amp hour and lithium is because we have a 12 volt fridge uh, in this rig, so it's constantly drawing power from those batteries. So that's it, kids. That's the three upgrades or the three mods that we have had done to this trailer so far. We have some other ones in mind and we'll keep you up to date on that. By the way, if you're gonna do mods, you should probably do the mods or an uh, IRA mobile tech and not have them done at your dealer, but that's a whole other video. Yeah, that is a whole other video. We have a video coming out about that, about having dealers do work on your rig. Let's just say it's not a good idea. I don't encourage it. So before we wrap this thing up, uh, we are we are just about ready to get going for our summer and fall uh, fun. We finished up this week. We had three days of shooting, four days of shooting, um, and we finished that up. That was the last thing we had to do in San Diego, with the exception of a wedding that we have to go to. So we will be back to weekly videos here very, very shortly. Um, remember to go and see the other collaborators. Oh, since you're supposed to do something, I've, I've been told you're supposed to do something to make people comment in the comments below. Tony Tao got her hairs cut. What do you think? I think it looks cute. Put it in the comments below what you think. And of course, the like, the subscribe, the notification bell, all that stuff. And I believe that's it for this video. Say goodnight, Gracie. Good night, guys. We'll see you on the next one.